How to become a Christian? If we are to be saved and have a place in God's kingdom, we must accept God's way of salvation. Here are four basic steps to become a Christian. Remember, all the help we shall ever get will be from above, not from this earth. Salvation is from God. Do you want to be a Christian? Would you like to be a Christian, but do not know how to begin? The steps to Christ are few and plain and easy to understand, and we shall just turn to God's guidebook now for our information. What must one who would come to God do first of all? First, believe. We must believe God exists and that He rewards those who seek Him. That's the first step. But you say, I don't have faith. How can I get this faith in God? Well, here's the way as described by the Apostle Paul in Romans 10 verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. The Word of God, then, as found in the Bible brings faith when we study it and receive it into our hearts. So begin at once to follow the Bible path. The answer is found in Hebrews 11 verse 6, But without faith it is impossible to please Him, for he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Second. Repent. Now we come to the second step, which leads us to a change of life. It is here in Romans 2 verse 4. Or despisest thou the riches of His goodness and forbearance and longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? So the second step is repentance. First, belief in God, second, repentance. But you ask, are you sure God will forgive me? The answer to that question is found in 1 John 1 verse 9, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We read the same thing in Exodus 34, verses 6 and 7, and the Lord passed by before him, and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering, and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, and upon the children's children, unto the third and to the fourth generation. So you see, our Heavenly Father treats us better than we deserve. Yes, He desires to forgive us. John 3 verse 16. The Bible says, For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's what God's love and goodness led Him to do for us. So, first of all, we must believe in God. Then we must realize that we are sinners and repent. Acts 3 verse 19. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Now, no one is going to repent if he isn't sorry for his sins. We read in 2 Corinthians 7 verse 9, Now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance, for ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. Repentance is simply being sorry for our sins and putting them away. It is not a sorrow for fear of punishment, but a hatred of the sin itself, because we know it grieves the heart of God, whether or not we suffer for the sin here on earth. Is it natural for us, of our own selves, to repent? No. In Acts 5 verse 31 we read, Him hath God exalted with His right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel, and forgiveness of sins. You know, friends, conviction is not repentance. It is one thing to be awakened at five o'clock in the morning, but it is another thing to get up. It has been said, Repentance is being so sorry for sin that you quit sinning. Across the Great Zambezi River in Africa, just below the Victoria Falls, there is a great bridge spanning the chasm over the most terrible turmoil of waters on earth. It was built by engineers working from both sides of the river. They extended on through the single span until the two arms met above midstream, thus completing the bridge. Repentance and faith are the arms of the bridge that enables us to pass from earth to heaven. They unite to make our salvation possible neither of itself is sufficient. We must believe in God and we must repent. It is useless, friends, to try to be Christians if we do not repent of our sins. We cannot change ourselves from sinners to believers in any other way. We read in Jeremiah 13 23. Can the Ethiopian change his skin, or the leopard his spots? Then may ye also do good, that are accustomed to do evil. Repentance is absolutely necessary. One reason why we have such unhappy lives is that we do not repent. Many who carry on a form of Christianity have never truly repented, and therefore have never been happy in their Christian experience. One reason why some religious workers never have a revival is that they have not repented of their sins. They are still unconverted. Friend, have you repented? Will you repent? Dr. F. B. Meyer tells of a revival meeting that was dragging along with no signs of success. 
Finally one of the leading elders arose and said, Pastor, I don't think we'll have a revival here as long as Brother Jones and I, won't speak to each other. Then he went over to Jones and said, Brother Jones, you and I haven't spoken to each other for five years. It's time to bury the hatchet. Here's my hand. Just then a sob broke the silence. Another elder arose in the audience and said, Pastor, I don't think there will be revival here until I repent. We can't have revival as long as I say mean things behind your back and nice things to your face. I want you to forgive me. Soon others arose and confessed their sins and tried to set matters right. It wasn't long before the revival broke out. Then the blessing of God came upon them and swept over the community for three years. Third. Confess. The next step in becoming a Christian is confession. James 5, verse 16. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Proverbs 28 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Confession that leads to the forsaking of sin is the real kind. But, in addition to this, what else is necessary on the part of the repentant sinner? If the wicked gives back what he took in pledge for a loan, returns what he has stolen, follows the decrees that give life, and does no evil, he will surely live, he will not die, Ezekiel 33 15. Real repentance and confession mean not only to stop sinning, but to do everything possible to make right past wrongs. No man can steal $10 and expect God to forgive him unless he tries to pay back what he has taken. Otherwise it wouldn't be real repentance or real confession. But when a person truly repents and confesses, God forgives, for we have already read in 1 John 1 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Forgiveness is God's work, not ours. When we confess, we simply believe that God forgives, and He does. That's the end of it. We may or may not feel that our sins are gone, but they are. We are not to depend upon feeling. We are to believe God. The son of a minister strayed from the straight and narrow way into a life of debauchery and sin. He made a name and great fame for himself in the world of affairs, but allowed himself to slip down to the lowest places. He described his own condition as that of a drunkard, a dope fiend, and a down and doubter. But, after fifteen long years, he gave God a chance to redeem him and he was gloriously saved. Then he returned home, but only to find that his poor father had died of a broken heart, calling his name, that through all those years his mother had kept a lighted lamp in the window every night and all night. Friends, God has a light in his window for all his wayward children. And, while the lamp holds out to burn, the wandering sinner may return. Won't you come back now, for God will forgive you? So we have these three important steps, to believe in God, to repent, and to confess our sins. Fourth is baptism. Now the next step is baptism, and the proof for this is found in Acts 2, verses 38 and 39. Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. The change which comes through faith, repentance, confession of sin, and following the word of God in all obedience, is called the new birth. Jesus said, in John 3 verse 7. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. This is spoken of also as regeneration. It's new life, a recreation by the power of the Holy Spirit in the heart of the one who believes. This is not something that we can work up, not a form of psychology. It's not a byproduct of education or culture, but it's a miracle wrought by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Then Christ lives His life within us, a life of perfect obedience. Can we obey in our own strength? No, for in John 15 verse 5 we read, I am the vine, ye are the branches, he that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me, ye can do nothing. But how much can we do with Christ's help? The answer comes to us from Philippians 4 verse 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. But if we do sin after we have made a start for Christ, should we become discouraged and cease to follow Him? Never. We read 1 John 2 verse 1. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. What if I keep falling as a Christian? A saint, or follower of Jesus, is not necessarily one who never sins, but one who, as soon as he does sin, asks forgiveness of God, believes himself forgiven and goes on rejoicing to grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord. He may stumble and fall, but he gets up and presses forward again.
such a fall is not counted against him when he repents and asks forgiveness and divine help to live the right life. But he is to grow stronger and stronger. Is it possible to be kept from falling? Jude 1 verse 24 answers that question, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. The final word, on becoming a Christian. So we have clearly outlined the steps that we need to take in order to become a Christian. First, to believe in God, second, to repent, third, to confess our sins, fourth, to be baptized and obey the Lord. Here is a sample prayer to become a Christian. You can follow it or modify it according to your heart's desire. Let's pray. Father God, I come to you right now, in the name of your most holy Son, Jesus Christ, asking you to accept me as a Christian. You say in your word that if I confess my sins and ask forgiveness, you are faithful and will forgive my sins and remember them no more. You will not hold them against me and you will give me everlasting life. Father, I confess that I have sinned against you. I have not followed your commandments and I have broken your laws. I repent of my sins and ask for your forgiveness. Father, I believe that Jesus Christ, your only Son, came to earth and was born, that he lived among us, and that he was crucified to pay for our sins and for my sins. I believe that you raised him from the dead and gave him power over all creation. Lord, right now I accept your Son Jesus as my Savior and as the Lord of my life. Send the Holy Spirit to guide me, protect me, lead me and counsel me. Send your angels to gather around me and protect me. Protect me from Satan and his evil forces. Help me grow in wisdom, knowledge and love for you and your ways. Give me the strength and courage to change my ways and resist the devil and avoid sin in the future. Lord, I thank you for sending your only son to die so that I can live. Jesus, I thank you in that you died for me while I was still a sinner and had not yet accepted you. I thank you for forgiving my sins and for bringing me to a saving knowledge of you. Please bless me and protect me. Teach me to pray. Guide me. Increase my faith, and make me sure in the knowledge that I can rely on you, no matter what may come. Lead me to a good church where I can learn your word and the Father's will, where I can fellowship with Christians and grow in my knowledge of you. I ask these things in your most holy and precious name, and I thank you for making me a Christian. Amen. Don't think that just because you are now a Christian you won't ever sin again. When you do sin in the future, don't think that it proves God didn't really accept you. God is interested in our effort, in our good intentions. Humans aren't sinners because we sin, we sin because we are sinners. It is our nature to sin. God helps us to reduce the amount we sin, but even He can't keep us from ever sinning again, until He changes our nature. If you earnestly prayed that prayer, you are now a Christian. As a Christian, you have obligations. Christianity isn't a vaccine you take once and everything stays the same. You must sincerely try to change your ways to avoid sin. God will help you do this. When you feel tempted to sin, immediately ask God for grace and strength to resist the devil. If possible, get away from the temptation. Sometimes, this means you may have to avoid people or places you used to like, such as singles bars. The biggest mistake you can make at this point is to accept Christ and try to go it alone. You don't have to join the first church you visit, but don't spend the next six months window shopping either. How to become a SDA Christian. Join the Seventh-day Adventist Worldwide End Time Movement. We are Christians who love Jesus and believe that the entire Bible is God's Word. Our name Seventh-day Adventist, describes two of our most prominent beliefs. That according to the Bible, the Seventh Day, which is Saturday, not Sunday, is God's Holy Sabbath Day, a special time when we worship Him, our Creator and Redeemer. The word Adventist points to the fact that we look forward to Christ's Second Advent, or soon coming. You will find our 20 million members and churches located in more than 200 countries. Contact a Seventh-day Adventist pastor in your area, telling him of your desire to join the Adventist Church. God is longing for you to be part of His last-day Advent movement that fulfills the characteristics of His remnant church found in Revelation 12 verse 17, which says, And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. If you are looking to find a local Seventh-day Adventist church, you might find the Adventist Directory Church Locator helpful. A link to the Adventist Directory can be found at the description below. May the Lord bless you as you continue to draw closer to Him. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and push the notification button, so you will be notified of our upcoming videos. Write in the comments section. I want to be a Christian. If you already are a Christian, write, I want to grow as a Christian and bear fruit. God bless you.